We'll welcome in those of you on the SEC Network into Baton Rouge, Louisiana, the ninth rank LSU Tigers looking to put the last two losses in the rear view mirror. There was a no panic that we heard from Kim Mulkey before the game about just this group and where they are. She said, hey, let's put this all in perspective. Absolutely. We're 18 and four yeah. on this season. We're fourth in the rankings in the SEC. We're yeah. still doing all right. We got eight games to play. Absolutely. Well, they have the big game, South Carolina game, and you're, you lose at home and you're gonna have a letdown. And so they go to Mississippi State and they get all Mississippi State, that a great, game for Mississippi State and uh, they had two losses and so we're going to see today how they bounce back. Forty Gators on the other hand trying to ride Aaliyah Matharu in the good rhythm that she had. Well this is a group that didn't see her on the court the last couple of games including that last win against Texas A&M. Well, yeah, she she's, uh, gives them a little offensive punch. She's a great leader for them. She's a great defender. So they need her on the floor. We talked about just the response that you mentioned from Coach Mulkey and how they would bounce back after you know that big game against South Carolina. Everyone was tuned in there. Mississippi State, they took their best shot in here. She says, what we did was we focused on us as Angel Reese is fouled on the way to the basket. We focused on us because that's the most important thing that we could do. We had a, a bye week, so we took a couple of days off. Yeah, well. And got ourselves together. It's not the end of the world that LSU lost two in a row. Right. It's, it's, it's a learning opportunity. They had a chance to rest mentally, physically, and they work on the things that they need to. And, and Kim talked a lot about the defensive end. And, and uh, look, the Mississippi State shot 52%. You, you, you're not going to win a lot of games if you allow your opponent to, sh to shoot in the 52% range. And Angel Reese knocks it down. Three points now for Reese, who we mentioned leads the SEC in points per game. Leilani Correa, we featured her in the open and how during the seven games are in SEC, she has been red hot. Flaugier Johnson trying to go to work. The crafty guard pulls up, no good. And Issa Morrow working hard yeah. on the boards, and that's one area where LSU excels. They get down oh. and dirty on the glass. Well, Florida has any chance of really winning this game. They cannot allow LSU to get sec second chance opportunities. And LSU are, is unbelievable on the boards. Stolen away by Matharu, and the smaller Matharu throws it up. And off the mark, last tier, Poa in. The backup point guard over to Michaela Williams and Williams over. So sweet. Ooh. I love her yeah. jumper. She <laughs> makes it look so easy. Is she a freshman? Yeah. That's you know, crazy. Hey, look, eight games in now in the back half of the season. Freshman no more oh, my in the goodness. SEC. I mean, we've seen her come alive. Remember, she had that 42-point game earlier in the season as bodies fall on the floor. Yeah, and so you'll see Williams, they find her. She just takes a little shot, pulls up. Just, how smooth is that? Just smooth, makes it look easy. Michaela Williams out of Bossier City, Louisiana, number one ranked recruiting class, one of four freshmen on this team. But she's been placed into the starting lineup because of some of the changes. We saw Samaya Smith go down, a player earlier this season who was contributing, and then another player dismissed from the team. And so Michaela Williams finds herself in a great opportunity, and she's been showing off yeah. exactly how good she <laughs> is. Well, you know, you always want to play, and as a freshman, it is tough to come in, but she she's not missing the beat. And each game, I think she gets better and better to me. She's just becoming... They're relying on her. She shoots the open jumper, and she's making it look easy right now. Zippy Broughton, one of the veterans on this team, as Rindall well off the mark, the air ball into the hands of Morrow, who brings it up. Morrow, who's got good ball handling skills, dips it off yeah. to Flosche Johnson. Oh, baby, that gets the crowd excited as a 10 nothing run. From the home Tigers. Yeah, you just can't. They're, they're, they're on a roll right now. And Flaze just wide open, making it look easy from the three-point line. 
Well, if you're just tuning in, folks, know that you're going to see a lot of offense because the top four scorers in the SEC are featured in this game, led by Angel Reese pacing the league with close to 20 points a game. You see those Gators crunched in there, and Malia Matharu and Leilani Correa, along with Anissa Mora on the other side for the LSU Tigers. So if you like offense, well, it's great because because they're great at doing it. Yeah, you're 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 at on the right you're at the right game because there's going to be a lot of offense, a lot of opportunities to uh, score some baskets. And we saw the flurry of scoring from LSU. They scored ten straight points here at the media timeout, and Angel Reese with three, Flaugier Johnson with three, along with Anissa Morrow, and Michaela Williams leading the way with four. So out of the break, and you see the intensity. This is what Kim Mulkey wants to see. She wants to see the defensive intention, intensity, the edge, and getting into their faces. And and what does she say about how to defend? Not necessarily fleet of foot, as you mentioned right. in terms of the guards, but what do they have to do? Well, just yeah, just basic, getting down in a stance, stay between. Here's how elementary it can be. Stay between the ball and the basket. And, uh, well, that series right there shows that they, have, they can do it. And when you looked at Kim Mulkey on the sideline, she was clapping up. <laughs> Very much excited about just that's the type of energy that she wants to see. And she says, hey, it's going to take some time for it to click. It's still a work in progress, but it's something that already has been taken to heart in the first well, she several minutes of this one. Yeah, she understands that in order to win games, win championships, of course, you got to score, but you got to rebound the basketball. You got to play defense. Those two things have got to go along with your scoring punch. Reese finds Morrow on the elbow, and she's able to knock it down. Twelve unanswered points from LSU. Matharu coming down the lane, and Reese, who averages a double double, snatches down that rebound. She's just a, she's a rebounding machine. Just a rebounding machine. You think of the rebounding machine, she also gets the free throw line early and often, but also I love the recognition that she had here finding her teammate. Yeah, she's drawing two defenders, and when she draws two defenders, she found the open player and made it look, makes it look easy. So very smart, not trying to force things, sees the double, kicks it out for the easy basket. Best in the nation of getting to the free throw line and making those attempts. And Angel Reese out of Baltimore, Maryland. Boy, she has certainly helped to elevate the game of women's basketball as we see it's in fantastic hands. She's repping the South, though. You know, you got yeah. Juju Watkins in the West and uh, Paige yes. Becker's in the North and Caitlin Clark in the Midwest and Angel Reese is locking it down here in the South. Well, I, I just, she plays the game hard. And, and a lot of people may not like some of the antics she does. You know what? Throw that out. She plays hard. She plays with passion. And uh, she makes this the Tiger team go. Great defense once more. But then they hand it right back over to the Tigers. And it's going to be Florida basketball. Michaela Williams checks out, takes a breather. So it's Van Lith, Morrow, Reese, Poa, and Johnson on the floor. Meanwhile, Kelly Ray Finley's group is down by 10 on the road. How do you inch your way back into this one in the final three minutes of this opening quarter? Well, when the shot's not falling outside, you got to get some easy looks. Got to try to get inside, but Angel Reese makes that really difficult. Talking about making it difficult <laughs> on cue. Her ears were burning, and Reese got a piece. Yeah, you just you driving in the basket, Reed. Not in my house. Not in my house. Good look again there from <laughs> Reese on the block. But you have to credit Matharu for for being fearless and and going in there. To well, you got to attack the you you got to attack the lane. You got to loosen it up a little bit. Reese has a tendency to get in foul trouble. And Johnson blocks that one away, and it kicks into the hands of the Gators and Rimdahl, who's an excellent three-point shooter is able to knock it down. So That's, much needed points there for the Gators. Yeah, they needed that. It kind of broke the ice for the Gators. Hadn't scored in a while. Morrow being 
challenge by Correa. She's fouled. And the foul goes against actually Aliyah Batharu. So that's Florida's fourth. The next one will send LSU into the bonus. Meanwhile, that was a shooting foul, so Morrow will be at the line. Anissa Morrow, who has been an excellent addition to this ball club, a great get in the transfer portal for the defending champs. Yeah, she, she's really vital to, to this team, so uh, doing what she needs to do. What a women's basketball doubleheader we have for you Thursday night right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Number one, South Carolina, the only undefeated team in Division I, host Missouri at seven. And then we'll see the ninth-ranked LSU Tigers once more on the road in Nashville against Vanderbilt. That's coming up Thursday on the SEC Network. Hey, check it out. South Carolina in action tonight. Hey, we'll be curious to see how they go into Thursday's game as they face off against Ole Miss tale of one versus two in the SEC currently. Right, and so Ole Miss's defense is so solid, and then LSU going to Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt, to me, is a scary, they're just a scary basketball team. And Shea Ralph has them playing hard. It's got people in key positions, and they play very good offensively, and they're very physical in the defensive end as well. Layla Reynolds, who made the bucket on that foul from Del Rosario, missing on the free throw. And quickly, then a foul once more. This time, it's going against the Gators. And that's going to send LSU to the free throw line. So, Aaron e. Kindred picks up her second personal foul. And we'll see the Tigers at the line. Florida's playing smart, uh, hard, but they've got to play a little bit. They've got to play smarter. They can't keep putting LSU at the free throw line. Haley Van Lith, he transferred in from Louisville and has been asked to assume a, a different position. Wanted to play at the next level. You talked about just the guidance that she was seeking from. Kim Mulkey from that point guard position. And her, her scoring is down, but you're going to see that when she's at the point position. So she's trying to learn, and, and they're not really relying on her to score as much as, as she did in the past. The scoring has been plentiful for the Tigers. They flip it over to Flange Johnson, and Johnson on the drive. No, but Morrow put back, rolls off again. Third time is the charm for Morrow and the Tigers. They are just all over the, the, the glass, doing a great job of second chance opportunities. And Florida's got to clean that up. And hey, Florida's head coach, Kelly Ray Finley, said, we know that they're better than us on the glass. We've got to be able to match that best physicality and be able to bring that grit and toughness. Try to hang in there. Look, it, it all starts from boxing out. And you've got to do it early. And, it, and that's just being physical and seeing where the ball's coming off and just box out your player. Del Rosario comes up with it. Haley Van Lith, one on three. She goes for it. The aggressiveness pays off. Well, that was a one on three. Largest lead as they doubled it here in the final minute of this first quarter. Matharu. Step back, no. Morrow just wants that rebound, yeah. sails in to get it. She's got eight already. Correction, nine in this first quarter alone. Well, there was there were four LSU people in the paint, players in the paint, and, and Florida had had no one. Matharu picks up her second personal foul, so she'll go to the bench with 30.8 seconds left in the quarter. And Florida's got to be careful with the foul because they don't have a lot of depth. So they've got to clean up the fouling. With some question, again, how would LSU respond after going on the road and dropping one in Starkville? Thus far, they're answering that with a resounding, we good. We, <laughs> we're okay. Yeah, they, 
obviously they're going to score, but they've, they've, they're holding Florida 11 points right now. And, uh, you know, they've caused them to turn it over. They've caused them to double dribble, to walk. And so those are things that uh, they've kind of put Florida in a disadvantage right now. Zippy Broughton with a big push off, and Kim Mulkey and the crowd wanted it on him. <laughs> There's on a Broughton. lot of officials out here, yeah. Tiffany. For the ones for today's game, Denise Brooks, Tiffany Bird, and Margaret Tymon. No call there. And again, making it difficult. Poked away. Correa comes up with it. The double team, they've got to get a shot off before the end of the quarter and not able to do so. Shot clock violation, and you hear the roars inside of the Pete Maravich Assembly Center. They like the effort from their LSU Tigers in that opening period. Welcome back here to the PMAG as we are just about set to start the second quarter and a thunderous roar that we have seen from LSU. And I'll tell you, Anissa Morrow has been powering the engine thus far. Yeah, she's been relentless, relentless on the boards. Just finds a way to get position. She scores off the double team for the pass from Reese, and then, you know what? She didn't care if she misses her shot. She just puts it back up for a rebound and a score. Anissa Moro, you see the numbers coming into today. Close to 18 points and nearly 10 rebounds a game. The double doubles speak for themselves. And again, when you think about just the different dimensions of this LSU team, she just adds another layer of toughness and power and go get itness to well, this group. Yeah, she just, you, you get lost when you have Angel Reese and you, you, you have. Um, Williams and Johnson, you kind of forget about Morrow, and she just steps up, and you, they just are great at every position on the court. So you see last year Poa in the game along with Haley Van Lith, and this is a look that we could continue to see a little bit more as the season trends on because Van Lith, her natural position is off guard. They swing it out, athletically brings it down, keeps it in play, keeps it up, and knocks it down. Long two. And she's a, she's a shooting guard, and she's learning. She's try, learning the point position. And, and so, hey, you need a bucket, put her at the off guard. She's going to get it. And Salgas with the ball. The Florida Gators, who had a 6-2 lead earlier in this one, started three for four, but since then, they have gone cold from the field. Well, those are shots, those wide open penetrate and kick out. You got to make those. Last tier, Pola, nice move along the baseline. Woo. The other way, Correa with a hand in her face. The triple goes down for Leilani Correa. Remember, coming off a 24 point performance. In that win over Texas A&M. Well, Florida's got to find a way to get her the basketball. Again, Angel Reese showing off her passing abilities. The assist to Michaela Williams, who knocks <laughs> down the trifecta. Wow, just clicking on all cylinders. Seven points for Williams. Back the other way and rims around and rolls in for Correa. We talked about just how special she's been in SEC play. Everybody's launching it and everybody's knocking it down. What? Nasty, Haley. <laughs> wow. It's a shootout. These two. Trading buckets back and forth the last few possessions. Rimdahl off the mark. Van Lith coming up with the board. Reese finds Lith. Morrow with her 10th rebound of the game, and then an offensive foul goes against number 24 in white. Yeah, I was going to say, guess who get the rebound? It's, it's not hard to, uh, to imagine Morrow got the rebound and just uh, gets, look, she gets early position, but just got to go straight up.
when you look at this Florida Gator team, they shot the ball pretty well against Texas A&M in their last game, averaging 44% from the floor. What more do they have to do? They've got to be able to knock down shots, as you mentioned, trying to get back here on transition defense. They got to get. They've got to get more than one shot. They're getting. It's one and done on that end. Just one and done. They've got to figure out how to get up the boards, and then they've got to do something on the defensive end. LSU's just in a really good rhythm right now. Hard fall to the floor for both Johnson on the take and Layla Reynolds. And both players being tended to by their teammates to make sure they're okay. Let's get another look at it here. You see Johnson falls first and then trying Ooh. to come down with the rebound and popping back and hitting the hardwood yeah, with I, that head for Reynolds. Yeah, and I don't, I mean, Johnson was just legs were coming out just as she, she fell. So I don't think it was anything intentional. A hard fall. Reynolds has that one poked away. Poa nearly got that one. Instead, Rimdahl pulls up from near the SEC logo. No good. And then a collision between her and Haley Van Lip. And those are the shots that they've got to make. The, the defense goes flying, and so you're you're on your own, and you, you've got to nail that shot in the lane. Two fouls for Rimdahl, two team fouls apiece for each squad. We think about this LSU team, much different look from what we saw last year, winning the national championship as that one was a nice feed in and out for Reese, but relentless on the boards and she won it more than anybody. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how she got that. It was a great play, a little pick and roll, bounce it inside and she missed it and uh, just got her little her rebound stat up. All right, let's go back to that pick and roll right here. Really just slipped the screen and nice pass and just shot it a little too hard, but she's always working. She knew where it was gonna come off and put it back in. Yeah, I, I'm just amazed at how many rebounds she gets. And you know she's going to do it. Right. Well, just in talking to her throughout the season, you know, one of the things she said, hey, I know my rebounding and defense helps to set the tone. We saw her with a block earlier and already today. The LSU Tigers are shooting the ball exceptionally wow. well. Ten points now for Michaela Williams as LSU is shooting a 58% clip from the floor. And, and, and these are some tough shots, too. Okay, so t don't tell me LSU can't play defense. I mean, c come on. They're, they're holding Florida to 16 points right now. They can play it when they want to play it. So you'll see just look at all the help inside, drawing the charge. There's, there's four people in that area in the lane. So LSU, you, you, you can do what your, what your coach said is worried about. You can play defense. <laughs> Save that one. Katala Rosario underneath and gets the bucket and one. The 6'6 freshman, Aliyah Del Rosario, showing off what she can do. Yeah, she tough pass, goes up in a crowd and grabs it, gets it blocked one time, doesn't phase her, goes up. And Dude's got it, Dude's big. You got to just make her shoot over you, and, and Duke cannot put them at the line. Just, just move your hands down. Just make her, make her make a shot over you. Joe Rosario, bright future for her. Played some critical minutes earlier in the season. And Angel Reese was out, and then also came up with some good moments in that South Carolina game. And you go back to that game against the top-ranked Gamecocks, snapped the 29-game home win streak. And Kim Mulkey said after the game, hey, it just came down to toughness and experience. 
as Matharu steals that one, the theft out of the night down in transition nice. and finishes it off. Yeah, and, and it didn't help that Angel Reese got in foul trouble and was on the bench, their their best defender. So, but that's a learning opportunity. Angel Reese has got to stay on the floor. Last tier Poa. Here's Matharu back the other way. Too strong. Reese Skies to get the board. Yeah, just Florida's one and done. They've got to, they've got to come around it. They've got to go to the boards. Slowing down the pace a little bit. Everyone taking a breath after a frantic back and forth. Nice. And a fearlessness that we've seen out of Leah Matharu. And boy, they're happy to have her back into the lineup. Her last game was back on January 22nd. But you know, when you've got Matharu on the floor, she's a guaranteed double digit scorer. She's within two of that. The eyes, the assists, and Del Rosario finishing it off. Swinging around, Kinsasaugus asking for it instead. Matharu directing traffic up top. And that's Sizing up Van Lith. Mm. Foul on the floor goes against the Gators. We'll step aside with 326 remaining in the first half. Peter Burns, Steffi Source. Coming up on the SEC Halftime Report, we get you caught up on the number one team in the country in action. A little bit of a tussle against yep. Ole Miss right now. Great comeback for the Georgia Bulldogs down at Stegman. What are you seeing in this one? Uh, in this game, my, my biggest concern right now for Florida is their shot selection. Way too early in the shot clock. Alima thought, oh, she's got to work through their offense. Make LSU guard for 30 seconds. Shout out to Rakia Jackson. 2,000 points, by the way. Thanks so much, friends in the studio, Peter and Steffi, and back here, Holly Warwick, Warwick, Tiffany Green. And if you're Kelly Ray friendly and you're in the huddle, take us inside. And, and what are you saying to your team? Yeah, Steph's spot on. You you got to settle down. you got to be a little bit more deliberate. Move the ball side to side. Make LSU defend. LSU's having to, to defend maybe one or two passes and the ball's going up. And, and I, I, I'm not really – I've said a lot about – Florida's rebounding. I'm not sure everybody else knows when the shot is going up. So this be a little bit more deliberate. Settle in, settle down, try to figure out how we're going to get a good look. You speak of the rebounding margin, 22 to 9 in favor of LSU. We'll see if they can settle down for the final 326 of this half, try to come up with some stops and get into rhythm offensively. And Florida can make an easy run by getting their defense to spark their offense and get some transition buckets. That shot off the mark, Correa coming back up the court. When you have Correa and Matharu on the court, this can be a dangerous duo, but instead, another turnover for the Gators. They've got 13 now in the process. Matharu picks up her third personal foul. It, it just feels like Florida is dribbling into trouble. Just trying to create. Again, moving the ball side to side. And, and they're a little frustrated right now. They're, they're, they're fouling, officials calling foul. They may not think it's a foul, but it's called, they gotta handle it, but they can't keep sending LSU to the free throw line. Last year, Poa at the stripe. As the Tigers lead the nation in free throws made per game at just under 21, along with attempts better than 28 a game. Well, they're, on, they're on track right now yeah. to, to possibly beat that that mark. To be brought off the glass, no good. Morrow feels like she just wants every rebound. She just had to get <laughs> yeah. it because Morrow was there and Reese. Spin move by last tier. Paula 
Wow. And it gets the fans to their feet. Woo. The home Tigers have their largest lead of the game. Salgas for three, yes! Much needed there again to see the ball go through the hoop if you're the Gators. Nice, nice screen down, created a wide open shot and nailed it. Good defense on the other end by Kendrick. So coming up with the stop and a chance to cut this deficit even more. Salgas going again, this time a little bit deeper. Got to get on the weak side boards right there. And Lith in the middle lets it go. Balance jumper, yes. And Haley Van Lith has found her offense today. She's gotten it going. She is leading the Tigers this afternoon. She's got 11 points. Well, I think Van Lith was a little surprised she was this open. Yeah. Uh, well, there, LSU's shooting right now 61%, so, but they're, they're doing a great job of, of distributing the basketball and, and moving, attacking the basket, kicking, attacking the basket, shooting, scoring in the lane. Leilani Correa at the free throw line. She's got five points this afternoon. Tuesday night, we'll have a men's basketball doubleheader right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app featuring the second game at 8.30 Eastern. Antonio Reeves and number 10 Kentucky taking on Vanderbilt at Historic Memorial Gymnasium in Nashville. And as the Wildcats look to bounce back after that loss to fifth-ranked Tennessee yesterday. On the inbound, Salgas, and so... The final 138 here for Florida. What do you want to see if you're Coach Finley? Well, you, you, you got a good stop down here on the defensive end. Get a good look here. Just chip away. Needed to have that opportunity to score. They turn it over, but they get it right back. Jariah Warren coming up with the steal. Faith Duke being guarded by Reese. Doesn't necessarily look for a nice. shot. Oh, great slip. Oh, fine to the basket on the back door. Yeah, that's just reading your defense. That's that's needs to ignite Florida. Here's Reese looking. She's got range, showing it all from the free throw line. She said, hey, look, yeah. I can step back and shoot if, if, if I just feel like I need to or I have more confidence yeah. to. And, and she's shown that she can at times this season. I don't know what else to do. I mean, you, you got to guard for the, the penetration. But when, when Angel Reese can make those shots, she's a difficult guard. And they want more of that from Correa on the other end now with 10 points. The pull up J is true. Well, LSU came out in this second quarter after putting up 24 in the first. They put up 28 here. And 4.5 seconds remaining in the quarter. They could add to that total, total at the free throw line. Yeah, it, the more I watch Angel Reese, I'm just, I'm amazed at how she catches the ball in traffic. I mean, there were two Florida Gators around her, and she she caught it, was able to throw the ball up and, and draw a foul. When I'm Florida, it, just go straight up and, and take your chances that she's going to make the shot. Reese knocks down both. As Angelica Velez comes to the ball game, 4.5 seconds remaining in the first half. What an excellent start it's been for LSU. Zippy Broughton trying to get a shot up before the end of the half, and no good. And 
It was the Angel Reese, Haley Van Lith, and Michaela Williams show on offense, each in double figures. But the defense really stood out, Holly, in that first half. Now let's sit into the studio with Peter Burns and Steffi Sorensen. Alumni week. Again, a beautiful scene here, 49th season of LSU women's basketball. You go back from the 1970s to the 2020s. Wearing the purple and gold is something of pride and honor for these individuals on the court who helped to build this program. And boy, it's got a pulse again under head coach Kim Mulkey. Holly Warlick, Tiffany Green here with you. And if you look at that first half, LSU was completely dominant. Well, everybody contributed to me. They they, they scored well from the free throw line. They scored well from the three-point line. And it was all about everybody getting into the action. And uh, they, they stepped up. They got rebounds. They hit threes. They got to the free throw line. And uh, it was a team effort. And then you look at these highlights. They didn't talk about how well their defense was. When you think about the stars among them for LSU, they are outscoring the Florida Gators all by themselves as Haley Van Lith has come alive, Angel Reese along with Michaela Williams, but Anissa Morrow who has done excellent work on the boards. And this is the type of LSU dominance that we've seen before and that many are hopeful will carry over into next yeah, month. I, I don't think they forced a shot um, and, and they've gotten good looks. They've moved the ball. They've gone side to side. Everybody, again, got into the action, but uh, Coach Mulk is going to be excited about their defensive effort. Shooting better than 62% from the floor and three for five from three-point range, so that's 60% as well. We'll see what Florida's defense can do to try to slow down this Tiger attack, and that's one way to do it is See a turnover, Cole, back into the hands of the Gators. And what type of adjustments do you make? Well, just right there, I, I love that the Florida jumped out into a, a zone. They, they weren't able to handle LSU in man-to-man, -man, so they jumped out of zone, got a turnover here. So a good basket, a quick basket, and just like that, and move the ball. Had a, had a solid shot, good look. We heard Steffi talk about it earlier, and then you mentioned as well the shot selection for the Florida Gators, and that's certainly a shot that they would want from Zippy Brock. Back the other way is Angel Reese bodying big and getting up in. 13 well, points for Reese. Florida does not need to, don't look it up at the clock, don't look at the score. It's just play ball just, just play. like that, due Absolutely. to Warren, and that was great offensive execution for the Gators. You just got to chip away, and you got to find some way to get a stop against LSU because they're red hot on the offensive end. Blanche Johnson sees that one roll off the rim. Florida, that got numbers. Rimdahl decides to keep it, and Broughton Ooh. tried to save it, but not in time. Well, probably got away with a little walk there, and um, yeah, it's a physical game. Basketball is a physical game. <laughs> Just a little knockdown right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Among the keys for Florida to try to contend with the defending national champions, they needed that grit and toughness to handle that physicality as Michaela Williams on the take to the bucket. Boy, I tell you, Williams is just one of those players who is special now and for years to come. Well, she's just a difficult guard because she shoots a three and then, then she, she can drive. And then you see Duke stepping out and, and hitting the three. Okay, she didn't want to go in to, to battle Angel Reese, so she just steps out and says, all right, I'll hit a three. Duke, first points of the game. Williams pull up. Jay is true. The mid-range is just one of the many tools that she has in her toolbox. Duke going for it, getting on the floor. Snatched away by Van Lith. Johnson is just quick, punches it out to Van Lith off the mark into the hands of Zippy Broughton, who finds the true freshman Layla Reynolds streaking down. Hard foul by Williams, and Reynolds will shoot a couple. Yeah, I, I like that Florida. You, they get a stop, rebound, and run. And, and 
So it takes away all the help that LSU's been bringing, and that was just a one-on-one, -on -one and Reynolds just attacked the basket and drew the foul. Reynolds, lone freshman on the team, who was quickly inserted into the lineup, a McDonald's All-American. He's out of PG County, Maryland. And, and when we've watched Reynolds this season, we've seen some flashes of her potential to be really good. But you come to the college game, you adjust. And then you move into SCC play. That's another type of adjustment as well. Well, it gets faster and it gets more physical. And, and coming out of high school, those are two things you've got to really adapt to. And the game is so up and down. And you got to be in great shape. And then you got to take the hit and take the contact. Flexing Morrow. Nine points. I believe I'd be flexing if I was, if my, I was in uh, Morrow's body. Reynolds tucks, and Reese comes up with the steal. See, that's what she'll learn when she gets older. You attack, you gotta kick it out earlier. And right now, LSU just showing off Ooh. just the assertiveness, this, the aggressiveness, the athleticism and physicality, as we mentioned. Yeah, Florida's just got to find a way to just tame, really, LSU. But that's a great example of what you've seen Kelly Ray Finley do in her third season as head coach, pulling players aside. Many of them love playing for her because they say, hey, look, she's, she's motivating me, she's encouraging me, and she's uh, maybe chastising me in the process, yeah. but in, in a loving way, well, you know? She's doing, she's teaching the game, and you can teach the game during a game. It doesn't always have to be in practice. And and uh, it, as it's hard at times, you're encouraging, but then you got to you got to correct the things that they, they need to be corrected. Cor corrected. Jariah Warren picks up her first personal foul. So Haley Van Lith will shoot a couple from the charity stripe. And is able to knock down the first quick reminder Monday night SCC inside grants you an all access pass to LSU women's basketball at 9 Eastern. Then go all access with the Florida men's program. You'll get behind the scenes footage and hear from the players and coaches right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. I, I like those. You get to see an inside look at the team, the coach. Mm -hmm. And you get to learn them a little bit more. You know, obviously, we're watching game day. We're, yeah. we're calling the games, but all of the little details and nuances that go on in between is what we get a chance to see. When you think about this LSU team, the way they were able to get some rest, took a couple of days off, experienced a bye week, and now back in action again. And looks like mid-season form, kind of what we saw a lot of in non-conference from LSU right here. When you think about just how they project forward and you think about the SEC tournament and postseason play, this is a group where you don't, you don't want to match up against them, you, wh whoever you are. <laughs> well, it, it, they're not. They're, they they learn from their two, two losses and uh, – Look, they're clicking on all cylinders here, and, and we said earlier that on, in the bracketology, they're 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 seated fourth. I, if I'm a number one seed, I, I don't want to play them, mm -hmm. I, and I, there's no way they're a four four seed. It's just no way. You think about, you know, being shocked by Auburn in this SEC play, snap that 16-game winning streak, and. Then you go South Carolina, top-ranked team. And then you think Mississippi State, those are the three losses within conference play of the four overall. But do you find that can be a good thing? Oh, uh, I, I do. I think it's great. It, it brings out some of your weaknesses. Uh, sometimes the coach can tell you you're not doing something, and if you keep winning, you're like, yeah, right, okay, well, we're winning. But it'll catch up to you. And, and a lot of things caught up to them, those games. The defensive end, uh, getting in too much foul, fouling out, those things really add up. And they can cause you to lose. And so 
you zero in on on why you lost the game. Well, Kim Mulkey's group with a comfortable lead here with just over five minutes to go in this third quarter. And thus far, they have answered any questions about how they would respond after those back-to-back -back losses. Aliyah Matharu at the free throw line for the Florida Gators. Nine points for Matharu who had missed the last couple of games. She's back into action and she's got double digits now. And Florida just happened to fall into the game that, that uh, after LSU lost two in a row. <laughs> and you know, if you're the Florida Gators, that you're going to try to, you're, you're going to receive an angry LSU group, a, a very determined Tiger team. And, and, and for that reason, you got to play flawless. And a blocking foul goes against last tier Poa. And we're going to step aside with 4.49 remaining in this third quarter. LSU up big. Special moment during halftime. 100 or so players back for alumni weekend. And the court who was already bearing the name of the great Sue Gunter. Well, they made the official honor and how special it was for many of her former players to be back on the court as the late great Sue Gunner was recognized. And wow, what a phenomenal yeah. coach she was, a torchbearer, a pioneer, two-time SEC champion, basketball Hall of Fame coach who coached some of the greats better than two decades here and helped lead the Tigers to their first Final Four appearance with some of those great players she yeah. coached. I, I, I just, I, she just brings a big smile on my face. I had the opportunity to be coached by Sue in the in the uh, 1980 Olympics. She's a, she was a great recruiter, great teacher, just a great person. Tiffany, she made everybody she met feel super special. When you think about. Sylvia Fowles and Simone Augustus. Yeah. Marie Ooh. Ferdinand Harris. I mean, just some of those great names within women's college basketball. Impressive indeed. But Gunter sees the program from up above in great hands yes, now absolutely. with another Hall of Fame coach. And Kim Mulkey, who surpassed her career wins earlier this season. And Sue helped get the ball rolling here, and Kim's done a great job to to uh, pick it back up. And, and what a, a, a test to have a hundred, over 100 alumni come yeah. back and honor Sue and honor the opportunity to have her name on the court. And in talking with Kim, you know, she just mentioned the importance of being able to stand on their shoulders, to recognize those players, to reach out to them, to let them know that you helped build this program and you're special and you matter and we want you around. She said she gave a piece of the hardwood yeah. from that national championship season last year to the alumni, uh, to the players. And, and, and that is something that they can take with them and know that they had a hand in the first ever national championship for the women's basketball program. Yeah, it, to me, it speaks a lot for them coming back. A lot of times the alumni don't come back. You got to come back. You got to be honored. You got to understand you helped build this program, but then you've got to turn around and support it as well. Back the other way to answer is Aliyah Matharu for the Florida Gators. She's got a dozen points now. And if you're thinking about the Tiger alumni, well, they have to love what they've seen on the show that has been put on thus far by this 2024 version yeah. of the LSU Tigers. And, and Florida did a good job of, they're in, they're in their zone, got a good stop, and uh, they just need to convert on those opportunities. Kayla Williams into traffic, able to somehow kick that out, swings it around. Flange Johnson for three, yes! Standing in place, looking it down.
Wow. Yeah, Angel Reese didn't, did, the get a loose ball didn't have anywhere to go. Give it to Big Flo. Yeah. Flaugé, Flossen real quick, super talented guard, just a sophomore out of Savannah, Georgia. Correa on the inbound. Ooh, she sure did. Traveling violation against Matharu. It's just been a tough afternoon for Kelly Ray Finley's crew here on the road. In the Pete Maravich Assembly Center, you think about just this atmosphere uh, and what it's been like throughout, you know, I think the snowball kind of from last season and then how it's picked up in intensity this year. The crowds that have come out and witnessed this group trying to defend their title. Well, this this atmosphere is what women's basketball should be like everywhere. And, and uh, they came out to support, obviously coming off a national championship. But you know, you, get, you want to support a winner. You get a little taste of that. And then it, it's what Kim, now the expectation is out of the roof. And so uh, today they've played almost a flawless game. Um, so the, the crowd, they're, uh, you would think they're up by this much people. There's not a person that's left this building. Williams inside to the 6'6 freshman. Del Rosario has it bounce off the hoop. What a great look. Reynolds pull up Jay in transition is true. In the process, she lost her shoe. <laughs> I wasn't trying to run right there, uh -uh. but uh, just kind of happened. Reynolds. <laughs> Angel Reese is assisting her. <laughs> Correa, and Johnson tried to poke the ball away from behind, picks up the personal foul. Del Rosario lost that shoe there. She was trying to put it on. No, oh, no, no. And, uh, okay, no. yeah, let me get oh. back. No, it's gone again. Kicked it off. Rimdahl stops, pops, it drops. Nice. Nice hesitation and, and patience. Angel Reese bringing it up the court. 6'3", Junior. I'm not sure I want Angel as my <laughs> point guard, but. Hey, you know, she's just showing off the skill set. That's all. <laughs> no continuation there. You know how she can bang her on the board. Yeah. She is tough inside. She's a walking double-double. <laughs> and she gives you all of the attitude and toughness that you want in the Absolutely. process. Absolutely. You, you want somebody that has that, that, drive, that spunk. That's just how she plays. you got to love it. I mean, oh, yeah. double-doubles and I always say rebounding is just heart and effort. And it takes a lot of energy. And let me tell you, she's a rebounding machine. And a star in our women's game and breakthrough athlete of the year. And the SB's record setting season just speaks to the all around nature of Angel Reese and the inspiration that she's been for so many. There you go, Florida. Florida did a great job of, of, of keeping LSU off the, the boards, and uh, they need to build on that. We talked about Leilani Correa, who inbounded the ball, who comes off the bench leading all scores in SEC play with better than 25 points. She scored all 10 points in this game in the second quarter, and that shot is blocked by Anissa Morrow coming over to help in time. Yeah, I, I like her. I like the look, though. That's that's the look that Florida is wanting and got. Morrow wanted that one on Correa. And the offensive foul goes against. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't know about the senior. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. I. I
I don't extended. know. If she, yeah, did she extend it? Extend that forearm. That's what they saw there in the offensive foul on that. Yeah, she extended uh, it and push off. Yeah. yeah. We saw it in slow mo. Yeah. I don't <laughs> <laughs> we can't say this. We already know that SEC basketball is physical, but here is exceptionally physical. Yeah. Today is Ben Lift. Yeah, we were talking earlier. I think the officials have done a, a great job this season of of letting teams play because it is physical uh, and doing a good job of just controlling the atmosphere, the tempo. Just um, you know, and I'm a former coach saying that's hard yeah. to. It's, <laughs> you it's hard the to come out. Of, credit? Yeah, yeah, I'm using the. I'm usually trying to help them out, but um, <laughs> they've. Uh, yeah, they, they, it, it, it is physical, and you're, it, you've got to play through it. And, and as you said, SEC, is it's always been – that's that's mm -hmm. their MO. It is a physical conference and athletic. A lot of teams don't like it. They get it – when SEC teams play other conferences, they're like, you know, it's too, it's too physical. Well, it, it's, it's how they play. Mm -hmm. And lift. Healing from the state of Washington here in the boot now. And she's got 19 points. But I think that season high of six rebounds is something that is going to please her coach as Poa and Duke tied up. A little temperance flare yeah. after it. And, and Faith Dude, who's the veteran of the Gators group, yeah, just didn't take kindly to Poa trying to snatch it away. Both players just trying to fight for the basketball, playing hard. Just a little frustrated. Just yeah. a little frustration there. And you know what? I like it. I I I I, I like it. I, I like her being. You no, know, I don't know what happened, but you see, dude has it. And then Poa tries to come from behind and rip it away and kind of slings her around yeah, in the process. She, but the temperature is rising here <laughs> in the pre-mat. <laughs> she didn't like being slung. No. <laughs> family from Sudan, grew up in Vancouver, Canada. Good faith Duke, she takes a seat. Correa with the ball in her hands, closing seconds. And an offensive foul against Ernie Kendrick. And that is her fifth foul, so she is done for the afternoon. Well, you, when you set your screen, you, you, you've got to get set. And, and it's up to the offensive player with the ball to run your defense into that screen. And uh, just a tough call. Van Lith puts it up before the end of the quarter. The exclamation point there for the Tigers. 78-43, <laughs> make it now 80-43 after that Van Lith. <laughs> yeah, she look, she's going to take it. She's not throwing it. She looks up in this crowd. It's like, what do you expect? Uh, thanks so much. They said it was a third sellout there at Colonial Life Arena. No ticket could be found for today's game. Kim Mulkey said, hey, I wanted to see improvement from our defense. We had to focus on us during that bye week. And when you look over the last two games, which South Carolina was a part of that opponent's right. point per game to today, a drastic improvement. Uh, yeah, and so I think she made her point. <laughs> Uh, and stats don't lie. So you, you're, you're, they have 43 today. She was given up entirely. Kim knows you, you, you can't give up over 76 points and expect to win a basketball game in, unless you're just shooting a very, very high percentage shot. So um, nice. Great percentage from the floor. Better than 55% throughout the game for LSU. And again, Angel Reese doing her job in every angle, six assists now for the All-American. 
She's just showing that she's such a complete player right now. Can do just a little bit of everything. She's up the floor. Flaugé Johnson with a nice up and under. Well, Flaugé Johnson is just an exciting player to watch, and you just never know what's going to happen with the ball in her hands. Back to Correa. Looks to Duke. Duke trying to help her create as Correa nice. goes inside, and what a take by Leilani Correa. Ooh, she challenged Reese right there. Nice. Nice drive in Florida. Hey, get it to your your horse right there. And she goes and, and look, there's really four people around her and, and finishes and gets an and one. What a spectacular move by Leilani Correa. Remember, she had three consecutive 30-point games. Folks in SEC play. Dropped 30 against Georgia, 31 against Mississippi State, and then had a career high against Ole Miss. That's how she's leading all scorers in SEC play. It's tailed off from that here today, but got 13 points and leading the way for the Gators. Well, er every point she's she's had today has been difficult. She's, she's had to create her own shot, make some tough shots. LSU's done a really good job on her, but, but hey, she continues to. Anissa Morrow, that's a part of her game too. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah. Tenth three of the ball, uh, two, three of the season rather for Anissa Morrow. Michaela Williams sprinting down the floor, pull up jumper, no. Great opportunity to Florida to go and attack the basket. That's exactly what Aliyah Matharu did, draws the foul on Michaela Williams. And see, Damar, they, she's just waiting it, looking back in the defender off, and I'd be smiling too if I <laughs> shot the ball like that. Junior out of Chicago, played at hometown DePaul before coming over. National Freshman of the Year back in 2022. And again, Morrow has just been outstanding. 14th double-double of the season for Anissa Morrow. 67th of her career with her 12 and 16 today. Florida again, tr just trying to change it up a little bit, get, get something out of their defense. They're running a zone, but just got to make sure that they close out on the three-point shooters and box out. Tracking down her own shot is Haley Van Lith for the long rebound, and then afterward, a foul goes against the Florida Gators. Jariah Warren, the guilty party. Oh. You can't just can't do it. You can't do that. <laughs> Morrow, that one was altered by Reynolds, but she got a piece of Morrow in the process. Second personal foul for Reynolds. Second for the Gators. What a women's basketball double header we have for you Thursday night right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Top ranked South Carolina hosting Missouri at 7 Eastern, followed by LSU on the road at Memorial Gymnasium in Nashville at 9. Should be a great night of hoops indeed. Well, halfway through the SEC season, this back half is going to pick up all the more as the push for the postseason right now. Your top four teams in conference, South Carolina, Ole Miss currently in action, Tennessee along with LSU. And it's, it's shaping out to who you thought would be at the top. And then there's a really a bunch of, of teams right there in the middle. So it's... Uh, it will make the SEC tournament really interesting. It will take place in Greenville, South Carolina, Bon Secours Arena, and taking a look at Charlie Cream's bracketology, the latest SEC projections have no shock there, South Carolina, the number one projected seed, but yeah. also LSU, number four, surprised. 
at yeah, that. Yeah, I, I'm. Yeah, I, if I'm a number one seed, I don't want LSU in my bracket. I, I think they're a lot higher than a number four. Uh, it's not one. They've got to be a two. Just they played South Carolina so solid, and and they have. And the reason why the four is because they lost some teams they quote unquote shouldn't have lost to. What do you think about Florida as a spill <laughs> of players <laughs> underneath the basket four go down? It looked like a bolt, like pins it, it, in a yeah, bowling alley. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness! It, yeah, so going through and then boom, all going for the <laughs> and then they all fall down. Almost a strike. <laughs> yeah, there's one left. <laughs> that tin pin was left standing. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, Florida is on the bubble currently in that bracketology, and a number of teams within the SEC in the last four in, last yeah. four out, next four. Yeah, and, I, and then Arkansas is on the bubble. I've done a lot of Arkansas games, and, and uh, they're a dangerous team because they shoot the three ball well, and, and they've got speed. Um, Sailor Poffenbarger is just a re you talk about a rebounding yeah. machine. Woo. It's hard to keep her off the boards. One of the best in the country as it relates to defensive wow. rebounds. And Anissa Morrow with her second triple of the game. Huh? Morrow is feeling it along with the Tigers as they're shooting still better than 54% in this game. I don't even think she looked at the rim. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness. Yeah, they find her and look. Well, she had a time to shape up and get her feet set and. Goodness. She's having a heck of a day. Well, she's been a player that's just been fun to watch. And when you think about her game, yes, still a junior, but the way it can translate if she wants to go to the next level in the WNBA, she's got all of the tools in her tool bag. Uh, yeah, can, she shoots the three, she's aggressive, she attacks the basket, and here's what I love, Tiffany, she has 16 rebounds today. Just attacking the basket, get in, and when you're in the pros, you gotta stand out and do something different, and, and I like, she can get up down the floor, and she's a tough player to defend. And you gotta keep her off the boards. I think back to that game against Virginia in the non-conference. She had 16 boards go along with a season high at 37 points. And they've just been able to rely on her. She's just been steady throughout. She can carry you if you need to. She can play compliment wherever she is yeah. needed. She has just been a nice piece to fit in. You almost forget about her because then you're worried about Angel Reese inside and, and, and then you have uh, Flaugenet out and Williams and you almost you almost forget I mean who are you gonna who are you gonna put your weaker defender on and that, that that's hard to do with this LSU team. The fab five of starters for LSU with Michaela Williams, Anissa Morrow, who makes the bucket there, along with Angel Reese, Haley Van Lith, and Flaugier Johnson. Great pass. Just unselfish. Williams could have probably taken it herself and just great pass inside. The hard drive to the hoop from Jariah Warren next two points. Morrow off balance there. Running in to get that one. And then the collision, the put back by Janae Kent, the true freshman out of Oak Forest, Illinois, as Poa Kent Williams Del Rosario on the floor. A couple of freshmen in Kenton Del Rosario who comes up with the rebound along with Williams. Tried to force it in there tomorrow. Raya was, Jariah Warren was right there as well. Warren who has been a solid rebounder and contributor for this Florida Gator team and she's back to her home state of the boot out of Lake Charles, Louisiana. It's always fun to come home, and, and when they announce, usually when they announced Florida, the players are booing, and, and, but when they announced her, she had a great round of applause. Fouled from behind is Reynolds as Anissa Morrow 
collects her third personal foul. Yeah, I, I like, look, the, ge the, the game's probably had a reach for Florida, but they're still playing hard, mm -hmm. and I love that they get the ball in and they're attacking. And that's what they've got to build on is, is attacking the basket, getting LSU in, in transition defense. Well, it's one of the things when you think about Kelly Ray Finley and just having covered her over the years, very grateful for the way she says her team works. And she talks a lot about giving her gratitude and says, hey, it's like a muscle. If you don't work it, you're going to lose it. You yeah. know, you got to use it and keep getting stronger and stronger. And these are the type of moments where you as a team are, are going to get stronger. You're going to learn. You understand that you're coming into the home of the defending national champions. They're ticked off because yeah. they lost their last two. You know you're going to get their best shot. Yeah, they're, and yet they're still out here competing. They're mad. And, and if you look at it, Florida is undersized just the height-wise. But um, that's the stuff that, they, that they're they going to build from. They will learn from this and, and uh, go back. And, you know, they got to get – the thing about the SEC is just like at LSU. You got to go back and go to back to work because you got another game coming up. That three wiped off the board for Michaela Williams as an offensive foul called against LSU. And I think they're going to review that one as Denise Brooks goes to the scores table. Let's take another look at it here. Yeah, I don't think they'll count it because it happened before the shot. Last year, Proer just runs into the Florida Gator defender. We'll take a look at it. We'll talk about it, and we'll come the back play to the decision on the other side. Five fourteen remaining here from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Harley Warlick, Tiffany Green here with you. Currently under a review of that last play as Michaela Williams dropped a three. However, they're reviewing to see if that foul as last year Poa ran into Alberti Rimdahl was before the shot. It was waved off. They took another look at it here, and we are getting word that the shot was no good. So the call on the floor stands here as LSU has come out swinging, a commanding lead for the defending national champs. And a conversation that you and I were having uh, just a moment ago, Holly, was the fact that, hey, this has been excellent basketball that we've seen play by LSU. Yeah, and it's... Um it's hard because LSU's put, everybody's played well, but then you look at Angel Reese is still in the game and there's five minutes to go, and it's like you understand LSU's depth. And, and yeah, she has to play because Kim doesn't have, hasn't had a lot of experience coming in for these players. The depth has been a question mark coming into this season after Samaya Smith went down with an injury, and another player is no longer with the team. As Reese is fouled on the shot. And media timeout on the court. We'll step aside as well. Come back with us here to the PBAC. While we have a moment, want to give a shout out to a Gator great, Mary Rooney Scoville, who played for the Gators in the early 80s and then went on to have a very successful career in junior college at Gulf State. In 1996, she started, and then about uh, 2003, she won her first national championship, and then she continued to run them off over and over oh. again. And will be a part of the 2024 women's basketball Hall of Fame class. You, you, you cannot meet a better person. Look, tough on her kids, tough on her kids, but hugged on them and, and uh, so excited. And, and she got recruited by a colleague of mine, Mickey DeMoss, and how she put up with Mickey, I don't know. <laughs> but so proud of Rooney and what she did and the clean version of Lizzo. It's, it's about dang time. <laughs> 
I like that. Well done. Well remixed, Holly. Yeah. I'd like to say the real version, right. but, I, I, you know, we're, we're, we're on TV. Morrow, Morrow, again with that offensive rebound, batted out, and then saved by Morrow, who gets to it here as a number of bodies converge on the basketball. But you see the attentiveness as wherever the ball is, you see a number of white jerseys around there as well. Those are 50-50 plays, and as a coach, you want to win all those 50-50 plays. And, and for them to bounce the ball around and tip it and get it, and then they, came, they come up with it is, is pretty darn good. And Kelly Ray Finley, who saw our team win five games in SEC play a season ago, has seen a tougher sled here in this 2023-24 campaign. And hitting the century mark for the seventh time this season, the ninth-ranked LSU Tigers have done just about everything right here this afternoon. An outstanding performance. Aliyah Matharu for three. Del Rosario cradling the basketball into the hands of Jariah Warren, and Warren is able to pick up an easy two. Uh, I really like that Florida's still competing. You, you, this, is, this is still a learning process, and you can learn. I know the score's so lopsided, but Florida's going to learn from this. They've done some really good things, and they just need to clean up a couple of more. Too strong there from Warren. Velez out of the Bronx, New York, up the left side of the court. Double team by the Gators. And the pressure, bus pipes there, coming up with the turnover. As Florida still fighting hard, as you mentioned. Kim just, <laughs> I love it. That's three minutes left and gets a turnover. Kim said, you got a timeout. Yeah. <laughs> you got a timeout. Matharu, great spin move right there as Aliyah Matharu was just so crafty. And again, getting after it defensively caused that steal, pulls up in transition and off the back iron. Yeah, you, you, you got to either pull out or just take it to the basket, try to get a foul, try to get an M1 there. Well, we've mentioned some awesome names on this broadcast. The Tiger great basketball coach, Sue Gunter, with the court honor, and that one rolls around for Del Rosario. We'll go to the line and try to complete the three-point play after this make. Yeah, and Del Rosario just gets, just weak side, just pushes her, her defender under the basket and comes up with the, the rebound and the finish. We talked about Rooney Scoville and Mickey DeMoss and Sue Gunter. <laughs> How about Bob Starkey? Yeah. Who was around for those Sue Gunter days and all of those great Tiger basketball teams and He's their defensive guru. Yeah. You're talking about somebody upset about anybody questioning LSU's defense. <laughs> Bob Stark is not going to be, a, he's not a happy camper. He's going to be happy today. So seeing head coach and longtime respected basketball mind. And Faith Duke will shoot a couple. Well, coming up Tuesday night, we'll have a men's basketball doubleheader right here on the SEC Network featuring the second game. It's 10th ranked Kentucky heading to Nashville to take on the doors at 8.30. You can also catch it on the ESPN app. The Faith Duke, one of those great stories in sports came with the program in 2019, endured a coaching change, and stayed with it the entire time, and has been 
an outstanding teammate, excellent student. And too strong there from Amani Bartlett. So emptying out the bench and allowing everyone to get minutes here. As we talked about the depth and defense for LSU down the stretch. A number of opportunities on the basket kept alive by the Gators. Sal gets too strong faith. Duke comes up with the board. And that's just been indicative of the Florida Gators this game and throughout the season. Yes, the score says something completely different, but this group has not given up. They do not give up. And, and this is what we were talking about most of the game is just getting second chance points, second chance points. And uh, Florida's still battling. Yeah, and there's the Baton Rouge native, Izzy Bezelman. And the crowd inside appreciating her time on the court. And you talk about Duke. I, I I love that coaching change, and and what do kids do this day and time? They leave. They transfer, and, and it says a lot about her love for Florida, uh, her respect she has for the coaching staff, and, and I love that she stayed and, and is seeing it out. Well, we have seen a number of spills here. <laughs> a number. <laughs> on the court throughout this game. Goodness. She get Duke got away with a little, little pull down. Del Rosario. Can't see that one go down, but she'll go to the line and shoot a couple. Well, the upcoming schedule for Florida, they've got eight games remaining after today. They'll go back home against Arkansas, then on the road at Mississippi State and round out their trip at the Magnolia State or against the Magnolia State teams at home against Ole Miss, Kentucky, and then Missouri. So the, they've played a, really the tough half of their schedule and, and – uh, so the, those are the teams that are a little bit in the middle of the road with them. Mm -hmm. So they'll have the opportunity to regroup and uh, play at home and, and uh, get a chance to, to get a win. They'll round out the end of the month at Georgia, then Alabama, before closing out the regular season the first weekend in March against Auburn. That basket waved off by Matharu, who's been the leader for the Gators this afternoon. Here's what's next for the Tigers. They'll head to take on Shea Ralph's crew at Vanderbilt, Alabama, Texas A&M. They'll face off against Auburn again, who again upset them last month. And, and, and then it'll that, be interesting to see that matchup against Tennessee on February 25th. Yeah, I, I think the, the Vanderbilt matchup at Vanderbilt is going to be a tough. And, and then at Tennessee. And um, and the Auburn game will be interesting. It'll, LSU won't be at – they will not be happy when Auburn comes to the <laughs> PMAC. 18 points on the afternoon for Aliyah Matharu for the Gators. Iziko steals it away. Matharu flips her hair casually <laughs> and then puts it up and in. Like it. 20 piece for Aliyah Matharu. Remember, she sat out last year due to transfer rules, came over from Texas initially. Is that Mississippi State? We weren't real sure that she was going to play today mm -hmm. either. Never yeah, been out with sickness for a couple of games. And she's been a lift for this group off the bench. The moves by Velez don't add any points. Alexia Dizico up ahead to Salgas. And then the foul there by Janae Kent. I, I, again, I like Florida being aggressive, not hanging their, their head and uh, working on things they need to work on. Remember coming up next, folks, Mississippi State at Texas A&M. Sam Gore and Tamika Catchings will be on the call, so you'll want to stick around as 
Great game coming your way from College Station. Rims out. Well, this is a cause for a timeout here. 30 second taken by Kim Mulkey as Well, you think about just the starters, we featured them in the open, all averaging at double figures on the season, and they follow through once again here today in this ball game. 21 from both Michaela Williams and Haley Van Lith. Yeah, the, they all stepped up in their own uh, their own time. It was like, okay, uh, Morrow was on fire, then then Johnson stepped up, and then Reese just does what she did, and, and Haley Van Lith had a Really, really good, solid game today, so. And Holly, we're in uh, Mardi Gras season, so we've got some beads here. I'm, I'm going to give you some. Yep. I'm glad yep. I didn't they have to do anything to get these. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know if I, could, I don't know if I'll be as successful as you as putting them on, but I'll just hold them up right here. They had a uh, Mardi Gras parade here in Baton Rouge Friday. Of course... It's even bigger and better in New Orleans, but this region certainly uh, just loves the feel <laughs> of Mardi Gras. I, I, I didn't get any king cake. Did you? I'm going to. Okay. I'm flying out of uh, <laughs> you, You're New flying Orleans. out of New Orleans, yeah, so you'll, just you'll get, get some. The king cake and I don't know. I, I, the little party atmosphere, I'm, I'm sure that, that LSU and, and the, the Tigers are going to have a – they have a reason to have a party atmosphere mm -hmm. after this game today. And you know – we got a chance to, to catch some of the footage of that parade. So a couple of nights ago, this is what it looked like. This is what it was all about. It was interesting because LSU was hosting Friday Night Heights from here. Obviously, they have an excellent gymnastics team. Yeah. But uh, Nemo and company were traversing through the streets of Baton Rouge, and then they made their way into the PMAC and had a sellout crowd, 11, 12,000 plus the way that Tiger Nation just supports their athletic programs all the way around and the influence of the bling from Kim Mulkey you see uh, plays right into the Mardi Gras feel and expression. You can't help to think to look at what people have on the, in, on in the stands, the <laughs> influence that Co Coach Mulkey's had on them. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I remember her saying, hey, look, I want to come back and do something positive. Never thought or would have imagined it would have been all of this and all so soon. In fact, you winning a national championship and the second season as the head coach here of LSU and a Louisiana native herself. And just got everybody talking about LSU basketball and excited again. And home to not only the women's basketball national champions, but the baseball team also won a national championship. They'll be back in action in a few weeks. And, and Kim's son played on the baseball right. team. So she's a she follows LSU base, baseball pretty pretty close. And what I, what I love about Kim right now is she's still coaching. It, there's 18 seconds, and she's turning on the bench and talking to her players and uh, making sure that – Every moment is a learning moment. Yeah, we spotted Kramer coming in here and supporting her mom. Love it. His mom in the stands. Faith Duke for three off the mark in the closing seconds of this one. And that does it. 106 points put up by the ninth-ranked LSU Tigers as they win big over the Florida Gators. An impressive effort, six players and double figures for the Tigers. For Holly Warlick, I'm Tiffany Green. So long from Baton Rouge, let's send it over to Sam Gore and Tamika Ketchings from College Station.